being mindful and present. Figure out where you want to start the edge of your seat, the middle of your seat. Definitely not reclined and back unless you're having a really bad day. Um, but you can feel your feet, feel those uh, the bottoms of your feet grounding down slightly. Roll the shoulders up, back, and down. And get in touch with your breath. Belly rising with your inhale, softening with your exhale. If you feel like you have a lot of adrenaline still, it might be helpful for you to take one hand on your chest and one hand on your belly, just to ensure that your belly is doing more of the moving than up here in that fight or flight zone. <clears throat> you may even want to relax the tongue off of the roof of the mouth. is quieting the mind so we can set an intention and set your own personal intention for your practice. When you feel like you have that, maybe it's a word or a sentence that you want to focus on, you can bring your hands to heart center, let your thumbs come in touch with that sternum. Bring the chin down toward the fingers, sealing in the intention. And we'll lift the gaze. Uh, let's start stretching through those palms. So we're going to press into the fingers and reach the elbows out, stretching through the, the palmar surface of the hand. On the exhale, lower your elbows. Keep the shoulders dropped. Yeah, those guys aren't moving at all. The more firmly you press into your fingertips, the more you're activating your synapse connections in the brain. One more. We'll interlace and not go up overhead like we sometimes do, but I just want to stretch the palms straight forward. Maybe tuck the chin or nod your head. See what that feels like between your shoulder blades. And then looking forward, bring those stretched out hands back and we'll take them to the shoulders. We're circling backwards. Right, and let's take a couple more circles. Good. We'll take those elbows straight out and just kind of warm up here. So you can keep your hands to the shoulders. I'm gonna drop mine today. Just Tip it over laterally, see what that feels like. And then we're gonna pick a side to hold. So your hold might be up here. You might back off that elbow, back your arm off. We're gonna hold into that stretch and bring your breath and your mindfulness and your awareness into your ribs. It's easy to bring your awareness here to the stretched out ribs. But Part that's crunched up, it's a little bit more challenging. On your exhale, engage your core muscles to come back. Here's your center, you can feel the imbalance. And we'll tip it over to the other side. So making sure you're um, taking care of anything that has limitations on your body. Breath and mindful awareness. All right, on your exhale, engage those muscles. Use your stomach muscles to come back up. Ooh, feels great. And a little cat-cow. You can do cat-cow for your shoulders or for your whole spine. Exhaling and arching and rounding. Inhaling, lifting up through the heart. And how, how much or how little you want to bring in uh, movement into the pelvic bowl is up to you. Now, if you're experiencing any low back issues, I would do minimal movement there. 
And we'll stack our vertebra back up until we feel like we're in mountain pose again. Then we can twist, twisting to the right. Maybe both hands stacked onto your right knee if you're taking care of that low back. If you want a deeper twist, try looking back over your right shoulder. And deepen in through your breath. Bring your belly breath in here. On your inhale, you can come back to the center. And your exhale brings you over to your left. Same thing, you can do an easier twist, a deeper twist. Spine stays up nice and tall and the breath is into the belly. On your inhale, come back to the center. Again, lean forward just a little bit. We'll inhale and come back up and hip walk back. And then forward, a little strengthening from those hip stabilizers. So we're at the edge of the chair. What was I going to do? <laughs> Just look out. All right, we're going to take the feet wide and try a wide legged forward fold. So making sure your ankles are right below your knees. Lean forward a little bit. Maybe stay there for a breath. We'll come back up. <clears throat> Let's see what warming up the from shoulder to knee feels like. Shoulder toward knee, but that's not what we're stretching. We're stretching in through that muffin top area of the obliques. We're just kind of keeping it super easy. Exploring mindfully, right? And then come back up. We're going to heel toe those feet in this time and hip walk. Take that journey back, <clears throat> excuse me, and forward. Hip walk, or feet walk out, out to the sides. And this time we're gonna lift and lower the heels with good posture. So let's pause there and check in with the good posture. So again, ankles below knees, I can't say it enough because this feels natural to a lot of people. So make sure your feet feel flat. Again, some belly breathing as you bring your chin forward and then glide your head back. Nothing else is moving except your head forward and back. And leave your head back. Oh, this is a good opportunity to bring your arms out. We'll sneak in a little bit of a warrior two with your head pulled back, turning your head over towards your right fingertips. And then over to the left. Back to the center. Let's put the palms up and grab some of that nice energy up there, bringing your palms down to heart center. Revisit your intention. We'll sprinkle that intention throughout the whole practice. And then we'll release the hands down. Heel toe the feet back in. And we're, we're going to walk those feet forward. And we did this last week sometime. I can really feel the effects right there in those little muscles. So we're just going to pick up, let's do opposites. We're going to pick up uh, one set of toes and then drop it. And then the other set of toes lift. So they're just taking turns. Hi, Claire. All right. And then we'll alternate. I'm going to bring the feet back just a little bit and do the same with the heels with good posture. It's like you're pumping your feet, pedaling your feet. And find somewhere that feels right for your feet. And we're gonna pick up one. I'm gonna do the left toes lift and then the right heel lifts at the same time. And switch. I'm making it sound more complicated than it is. <laughs> you can resist if you like. Check in with your breath. Oof. Maybe bring in some gratitude that we're not standing doing this. All right, and then even things out, we're just gonna run, run a little bit. <clears throat> Plant your feet, take that journey back. It feels okay, and then forward again. Heel toe your feet out. Okay. All right, it's windshield by first time. Let's bring the heels up. We'll drop one knee in at a time. 
remember to take good care of those knees. So if you have anything going on, maybe just work on one side and then the other. And check in with your posture, maybe turn your head, keep that neck a little bit more. The next time your right knee comes down toward the front, let's get everything lined up so we can take that lunge. All right, so making sure ankle below knee on that left leg, your right knee is going straight down if, you, if it feels okay, if not, bring it forward. And shoulders over hips. So let's pretend we all have really tight hamstrings. What would we do? We'd bring a little bit more mobility in through gentle movement, making it easy. I have my hand on my hip, and I'm gonna inhale back and exhale, bring my shoulders over my over my hips. So those very, very gentle movements. Find a place where you feel like it might be beneficial for you to hold. So a little uh, dynamic movement and then a static hold. If you wanted to bring the arm in, if you feel like that's beneficial, great. If you're working on a tight psoas, maybe you take that arm up and over your head. Have lots of options. We'll be here for about three more breaths. It might feel good to take that arm down and just kind of rake those muscles. Come back, do the same thing on the other side. Alignment is very important. Get in that beginner's mindset, feel the bottom of the feet. There's your mindfulness. Get the left knee pointing straight down, shoulders over hips. Leaning back just a little bit. We're exploring and inhale coming forward. So leaning back. Now, of course, if this hurts your, your low back, if you're feeling anything unpleasant, then of course you're not going to go there, right? You can take the moments here to find your edge, find that place where you want to hold into the position. You decide if you want to deepen through hip flexor, um, the front side of the thigh by reaching your arm up and back, or if you're a tight psoas person, then you want to reach over your head. Maybe one more breath. And then we'll come back, stack shoulders over hips and break those muscles. Right, and then we'll come back to the center. Guess what we're doing? We're hip walking back again. <laughs> and let's take a, a simple spine balance. So we're gonna take the right leg out as the left arm comes up. As we're bringing that leg out, then reach through your heel, reach, extend through the arm. If you can straighten that arm even better. On your exhale, that was a long inhale, <laughs> bring everything down. Then we'll just keep alternating those limbs. Mindfulness. Notice what your tongue is doing. Can you relax your tongue? Maybe bring in a little uh, Mona Lisa smile, soften through the face. We're going to the full extension of the inhale. Finish your exhale. So you might be going slower or faster than me. Work to both sides of the brain. All right, so the next time your right leg comes out, let's bring both arms up, push into the floor with your left foot, and here's your warrior one seated. Check in with your head. You can always take cactus arms if that feels better. And remember, if you're in cactus arms, they're not just lazy in front. You're going back, you're squeezing the shoulder blades. Okay, and then we can point and flex the foot, <laughs> and then we'll circle the foot. You could be pointing and flexing your nose if you didn't know, you can go around in the other direction. On your exhale, let's synchronize everything to finish the exhale in child's pose. 
in your child's pose, open and close your mouth as wide as you can. On your next inhale, let's bring the opposite limbs out. Well, now we're just on the left leg and both arms, right? And pushing into your right foot into the floor. Checking with your head. Maybe cactus arms again, point and flex your foot to the full range of motion. So we're not shortchanging that ankle. Circle foot, go around in the other direction. Okay, one more big breath in. Synchronize your exhale to land in your child's pose. This time, maybe a lion's breath. So inhale through your nose, exhale, sticking your tongue out and kind of roaring. You can do a whisper roar or a loud one. Drawing your belly muscles in on that exhale, maybe one more. Then we'll come back up and take lightning bolt arms, bringing the shoulder blades together, opening up through the palms, lifting up through the heart. It's the opposite of all that forward um, holding and breathing, right? Because we were doing lion's breath, we were filled up. Ah, and then come back to a neutral mountain pose. Um, we're coming back forward to the edge of the chair. And you can heel toe your feet out again. We'll take another warrior too. Um, on that note, if you wanted to come up to standing and do your standing variation, that's fine too. So if you're Take that kind of middle of the road. You're going to leave your feet right where they are. If you want a little bit more seated, turn your right toes, bring your right knee out to the right. And your left leg will extend a little bit. Make sure you're being very careful with this knee. Put this flat shoulders back over the hips. Yeah, we can get those arms out. Check in with your head position. Turn your gaze over towards your, the tip of your right middle finger and breathe into it. And then we'll release those arms down. I keep seeing the screen blips. I'm looking at the screen strange, <laughs> strangely. Uh, release your arms, bring your feet back. If you're standing, maybe you'll take a down dog here. If you're seated, you can lean forward. With the effect of down dog in the seated position, I use my mind's eye to think I have my tailbone reaching in one direction and the crown of the head reaching in the other direction. All right, and then we'll come back up and take those feet wide again. We're on the left leg coming over to the left and the right leg extending, foot is flat. Knees is protected by a little bend if you need it. All right, so shoulders are at the hips. Oh, it's really uncomfortable in this chair today. <laughs> Arms are coming out. And let's pay attention to the feet too. So I just noticed one foot wanted to take a, a break and float up for some reason. So we're going to really anchor down into the feet, reaching wide through those fingertips. Breathing into the fingertips and relaxing those arms down. And let's bring everything all back to neutral. All right, so if you're staying seated, this is a great time for a push squeeze, meaning we're going to push those tripods, the bottoms of the feet in to the floor, squeezing your imaginary block and release. You can keep it there at that level or add. Push into the floor, squeeze imaginary block. Push into your lap to get taller. Don't lift the shoulders. And then squeeze your shoulder blades together. And then release. So you can keep doing that back and forth, remembering to breathe. If you want to come up to a standing position, now's a nice opportunity. So I'm still pushing into the floor, squeezing the imaginary block. Lengthening through the spine, the heart pointing forward, breathing. Yep. 
And we'll come up to a standing position if you choose to. And recheck in, no matter where you're at, with your intention. Breathe it in. Um, if you're a visual person like me, I see it written out sometimes, and I'll kind of imagine I'm breathing that in. Right, go right back to warrior two again. So with our feet wide, <clears throat> right toes will turn. Do a little twist to grab my water. Bend into your right knee. We'll bring those arms out. Feel the feet mindfully grounded down so we can feel uplifted. Take the crown of the head and see if you can touch the sky. You know, we'll take our, let's do it a um, side angle here. So we're gonna drop the hands and lean the shoulders over towards your right knee. Keep rolling that left shoulder back. Keep the height in your head so that axial extension still stretching the spine. Okay. Take it easy this first time around, and then we'll revisit it and add more uh, strengthening opportunities. So we're going to engage the core, come back up, turn the toes, go to the other side, get the left toes turning, up to knee bends, stack the shoulders, hello warrior two, Feel those feet nice and grounded, rooted down so we can uplift. And on your exhale, you can lower your arms. I always take my hands to my hips for some reason. You don't have to. And take our little, we'll call this a, a pre-side angle. Test in the water, see how we're doing. Hmm. How's the neck? That's where we're How's your roof of your mouth? Is your tongue still crammed up there? You can relax that. Use your core muscles to come back. We'll take a symmetric pose in between sides. So you can bring your feet back together. Lean forward in your child's pose if you're seated. And you're standing. If you're standing, it's a down dog opportunity. And if this is your first down dog, maybe pedal your feet. I have to share what happened to me this morning. Oh my gosh. So I was in my pajamas, um, had a nightgown on, and I was doing a nice down dog. And I look, I look back, my hands were on the floor, and right there was a spider dangling, and I just went nuts. So that's how I started my day. All right. <laughs> I did fling him off. I took a picture, made sure it wasn't brown recluse, and then I scooped him up and sent him out the door. So right side, <laughs> we're turning back into warrior two. Oof, got my heart rate up just thinking about it. Side angle this time, you can take the same side angle. <clears throat> and of course, you can do the same thing seated. If you wanted a little bit more of a stretch, you can take your top arm reach up, 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 or over your head, so your bicep. Um, comes close to your ear and your palm is down. And how much are you collapsing into your leg? You're using more core if you're not using um, your leg as a support. Oof. All right, use your stomach muscles, come back up, warrior two. And let's switch sides like this. We're gonna flip the palms up, straighten the knee, bring the arms up, turn the toes. If you need to hold on, hold on. Nice extension here, and then release. So let's go to the left side. And warrior two. Feel and enjoy being present in your warrior two. And we'll take our side angle, and you're welcome to stay anywhere you like with your arms. Get that shoulder stack. Top arm reaches up or over, check in with your bottom hand, is it supporting you, or can you let your core support you? All right, so use your stomach muscles to come back up through your warrior two. We'll flip the palms again, straighten the leg, turn the toes, reach. 
Ah, and then just let those arms go. And send those feet back together to mountain pose. Check in with your intention and how you feel. How's your breath? Okay, let's take another down dog. <clears throat> Making sure your, your wrists are in alignment with your shoulders. You know, if you're seated, I would love for you to push into your lap and lift up through your heart so you can get a little bit of a, more of a heart lift. And then we'll come through, if you're seated, through your mountain pose. If you're standing, we're just going to step that right foot forward back to warrior one to invite a nice stretch through the back of that left leg. And if you're seated, you're gonna work on strengthening your right leg. Okay, so for the spine, let's address that a little bit of this. We can do a little bend and straighten if your knee is okay with that. If you're seated, you're still gonna bend and straighten that leg while you're holding it up. That's nice for strength. And then find a place to hold that leg. We're going to hold on to the chair with the right hand and left arm reaching up. And maybe over your head if you want to deepen the stretch, if your balance feels okay. How's your breath? Use your core, come back. Okay, let's bring it all the way back to down or facing dog. And we'll look forward, step the left foot forward, anchor into the floor, shoulders over the hips. This left hand stays on the chair, right arm. Oops, we didn't do this. Let's do this first. Bend and straighten your leg. Only as much as your knee will, will allow you to. So not going into pain here. And then we'll finally hold. Back leg is straight. Now we can bring that right arm up and maybe reaching over your head. So you definitely feel that really nice stretch through that side of the body. And inhale back to the center. Release your arm down, step that leg back. All right, so back to um, a lunge. So if you remember the seated lunge, your legs are wide and your right leg drops in the front. If you're doing a standing lunge, right leg is in the front. And the back heel will come up straight up. All right, let's see what it feels like to drop straight down only a tiny bit. So check in with how this feels on your back knee. Front knee is not passing the ankle. Holding for strength. If you want it to flow a little bit, you can squeeze the glutes to come up. And definitely it's up and not forward, right? And then drop it straight down. If, let's say you're thinking, oh, this is too easy. Maybe you want to work on balance a little bit. You can take one arm up. And that, on that note, make sure you're not on train tracks or you're not on a balancing. Your feet are wider. And then maybe you could do both arms and come into uh, maybe a crescent lunge and a hold. So we're holding here. Use your core muscles. Why not, right? <laughs> Bring your hands back down. Take a neutral pose. So I'm taking a down dog. You can do child's pose. You can move a little bit. Make it yours organically stretching. All right, let's do the other side. Left leg is in front, and if you're seated, um, you're doing windshield wiper legs, and left knee drops in front. All right, uh, right heel is up, shoulders stacked over hips to give the, uh, the hips the challenge of that added weight. We're dropping this knee straight down and squeezing the bottom to come up. If you wanted to just hold, that's always a nice option too. 
Nothing should hurt. And then maybe hold. I'm gonna hold up a little bit on this side myself. Make sure you feel grounded on that left foot. Maybe the right arm comes up. Maybe both arms. Don't feel obligated to do both if it doesn't work for you. How's your breath? On your exhale, release your arms. And we'll come back to a nice uh, neutralizing pose. So if you're seated, um, let's all just do this. Sorry, <laughs> we'll take some hip circles. That'll be a nice stretch to symmetrically stretch on those hips. Find your range of motion that works well for you. Good. If you're seated, of course, your upper body is doing all the moving. All right, and then come back to neutral. Let's do some heel raises again, but we're not alternating. So we're gonna find our mountain pose feet. So feet are hip distance apart. We'll lift the heels, find the balls of the feet, holding us up. And the exhale floats the uh, heels back to home. <laughs> Am I out of breath? I don't know. You can lift one arm. And exhale lower. And if it works for you to alternate your arms, then maybe create a pattern here. So both arms up. Exhale down. Can we go back to your first arm? Second arm. Watch the gripping of your toes. Let's do this three more times, right? Just this one pattern. Mindfully, watch your breath. And last lift. Maybe you keep your arms up there. We'll drop the heels and sit the hips back. Ooh, bear my knees. <laughs> I'm gonna take my feet out a little wider. Oof, I'm bringing my arms down, but you can keep yours up if you want more work. Um, if you are seated, your push squeeze is a great option right here. Everything below belly button is working. Give those hands a nice push. If you have hands at heart center. Good. All right. And then just come up and shake it all off. Finding our mindful yin and yang there. So the work and then the ease. Let's bring in the easiest mountain pose we can think of. So you're holding yourself up. Bones are stacked. Feel your fingers soften, relax your arms. Good. All right, we're gonna start our balance right up here in the old melon. So check in with your Initial thought at the word balance. Somebody's leaving the room. Um, so check in with your mindset. We're just going to rock those feet forward and back. And say this tell myself the affirmation my, my balance has an opportunity to improve. Even if I stay right here, just rocking the feet forward and back. And definitely if you're seated, a little side to side shift. If I take my feet out a little bit more, that's even more kind to those uh, balance resistant people. You can hold on for sure. Okay, I'm gonna take my feet out just a little bit wider and see if I wanna lift one side and then the other. So making sure we're in that really good posture. You could uh, make end up like this, right? So if you're holding on, you're still shoulders stacked over hips, heads pulled back. Now I'm gonna try to not use momentum because momentum is easy, right? So I'm gonna find a place to hold and be okay with. Maybe I keep my toes down on this, uh, that would be a right foot. Maybe I'll take this left arm and reach it super high with my fingers spread out wide. Maybe the right arm comes up, posture, breath, softness in your face, all that stuff helps. 
and then come back. And then you can be honest with yourself. Are you, were you holding your breath in hopes that you weren't going to topple over? <laughs> um, so if you feel like you're going to topple over, drop your foot, hold on to something for sure. All right, so go back to just at ease, at rocking, so our mind can get used to this. The balance is getting better. Posture is improving. Shift your weight over into your left leg and making sure you're not locking that left knee. And just maybe you do some of this, right? You're lifting and lowering. Maybe you're building that trust with your brain. Maybe you keep your toes down, or you want you want a little bit more. You would flex your foot. Then we'll take that opposite arm. That would be your right arm, and stretch it up with your fingers wide. Right. You can hold on, you can come back, you can come out of it. Notice any resistance. So when I'm in a position where I, I'm not happy, I don't enjoy it, could be in yoga or in life, you feel the mouth dry up, you feel your tongue reaching, stomach, right? <laughs> and then come on back. And we need to neutralize all of that. So push, squeeze. For a chair pose is nice. Drawing the belly in. And then let's give the body a break. So a nice little ragdoll, okay. Shake your head, release everything. Okay. So let's take it, let's go ahead and come back onto the chair. If you're standing, as always, you want to take a slow motion sit. Slow as we can, without being sarcastic about it. <laughs> I have a hard time with that. Somebody tells me go as slow as you can, I'll take 15 minutes to do it. All right, so we are going to really emphasize another opportunity for a stretch. Um, for the thighs, well, let's do actually the glute first. So I'm gonna hug the right knee in. If you're taking care of knees, a great place to hold on is underneath your knee. Hold on in front of your knee, underneath. You can go back and forth. Sometimes I use the thinking of if, if I have a tight area or a problem area, I will try to stretch around it first. Um, so that's my way of thinking right here. So I'm imagining everything's tight here. I want to go all the way around and stretch the glutes. That's what we just did here. And then we're going to stretch the hamstrings through our pyramid pose. So I don't know if my foot is on, on the camera or not, but I have the, the right leg outstretched in alignment, toes pulled back. Good posture. If you're not feeling a, a nice stretch anywhere, you can lean forward a little. Softening in, breathing into where you feel the stretch. The toes are really active and pulled back. Relaxing the shoulders. And, and then we'll come up, hug that knee back in. And if your hip will allow, if it's okay, if you've had a hip replacement, take an alternative pose or movement. Um, pigeon pose would be nice here. Um, and we'll hold on to, let's hold on to the ankle. And this foot is flexed, toes pull back toward the shin um, to support the knee. So I'm just gonna guide this knee up and away. Covering all the bases in case you're tight. Piriformis, release the knee. It, it, if you're really tight, your knee's gonna to wanna to be up here. And I've seen people even do this. We want to try to let the knee be like a weight and pull it down toward the floor without manhandling. If you're here in your pigeon, you wanna feel it a little bit more, you can lean forward with a straight spine. Keeping this foot active. Right. 
and then we come back up. Release that leg, stretch it out again, get some circulation back in your foot and the knee. Up around the side and the back of your knee. And we'll, we'll go ahead and, and finish doing one side and then we'll do the other side. So back to our lunge. Right leg is in front, it's getting the most attention. And maybe you untuck your toes so the toenails are down. So that way we can stretch the top part of the ankle as well. And we can't just isolate one part of the body, it's all interconnected. And then find another enjoyable lunge here. So let's say you want it a little bit more, you can try to bring your knee back a little bit, but be careful of that knee. We'll ease back, shoulders over hips, plant that foot. It looks like I hit the rewind button. I would say, use your core, bring that leg forward. Use your core, we'll come forward in this direction. And let's see, let's go back to stretching the glutes. So now we're on the left side. So holding on wherever it feels best for you. We'll go back and forth. Exhale as knee comes in and cow knee moves away. Find a place to hold. Let's do pyramid. We'll stretch that leg out. Ooh, that feels good. Pull the toes back. Up through the spine. So you have that length in the spine again. There's that axial extension. If you want to come forward for a deeper stretch, just inch right at those hip creases. <clears throat> and see how much you can relax into your face and your neck and your shoulders. We'll come back up and it's pigeon time. So it's another knee hug, this foot. If again, crossing the midline of your body is not for everybody, but if it works for you, let's give it a shout, give it a try. Bring that knee forward and back a few times. Let the knee move away toward the floor as you're keeping this foot actively flexed to support all these muscles will engage around the knee. <clears throat> and you can take that nice tall spine and hinge forward. Deep breath. Visualizing what's going on in the bottom. Next inhale, we'll come back up and unfold the leg, bring some juice back into the into the ankle, massage your knee, behind the knee joints. There we go. Now we're ready for the our final little um, seated lunge with maybe if it worked for you on one side, maybe it'll work on it again on this side to untuck your toes. So the top of your foot, your toenails are down. So the ankles are get, getting a little extra love. Knee is getting a stretch. And if it's a too much of a stretch, bring your knee forward. Stack your shoulders back over your hips. Use your stomach muscles to bring that leg back. Bring all the way back to neutral. It was very asymmetric. So let's bring in some symmetry with our um, pressure cooker. So we're going to push it into the legs. As we exhale, hands are gliding on the outside of the legs. Legs are pushing out. Hands are pushing in. We inhale, we put it back up. Exhale. That was clear. Howling. That was the cutest thing ever. Watching the good green. <laughs> She's staring. 
blank that that may push you could see here. All right, one more. And then we'll come up. Let's bring the feet together and give just a nice squeeze. Push into the floor, squeeze everything below the belly button, and release. Come back to mountain pose. And we'll twist to the right. And now back to your center. And we'll exhale, twist to the left. Inhale, center, and exhale, lean forward. Oh, brain work. Let's do a little bit of brain work. Let's see, which one haven't we done in a while? Let's do everybody's least favorite. I'm just guessing. No, no, we'll take one hand. <clears throat> We're going to make it a V. We'll call this a V. And then we're going to glue the middle two fingers together and do the W. So just try to go back and forth between V and W. And you can use your other hand. You can cheat at first, but breathe and soften, relax your shoulders. I'm going to sit back down because you don't really need to look at what I'm doing. So um, you can look at your own hand. And you're not going for speed, you're just trying to do the work, creating new neural pathways in the brain. Keep your face soft. And then when you're done with that hand, just kind of release it out. Tell it's okay if it made a mistake. <laughs> we'll try the other side. It doesn't matter which way you hold your hand. <clears throat> Excuse me. Opening to V and then W. One hand might be more uh, proficient than the other. Do we want the ultimate challenge? Oh, sure. I'll do a couple more with this hand <clears throat> and then shake it out. <clears throat> Excuse me. And now we'll try both hands at the same time. We'll go easy and then more challenging. So both both V and then W. <clears throat> Excuse me, V and W. Mm -hmm. Good. And then we'll try to do opposites. So I'm going to take this hand and do V, this hand's going to do W, and then switch V, W, I have to actually look at them, <laughs> B, W, B, W. Does everybody want to go out and buy a Volkswagen? Sponsored by, <laughs> maybe I'll get a free Volkswagen. There. Maybe they'll send me a hat. All right, when you've had quite enough, you can shake that out. All right. And then we can do one of these numbers to interlace your fingers, stretch the palms away, tuck your chin, inhale, lift. Exhale, release those arms out wide, lift up through the heart, you can push into the chair. And then one more round, just like that. Interlace your fingers, stretch your palms away, tuck your chin. Inhale, lift. Exhale, release. All right, and then we'll warm up those hands for self-massage. Start with your right leg, lightly brush stroke up, only in the direction of your heart. Skipping any parts of the body that have had a lump back to me. And the left leg, the left groin, the belly, the right arm, the armpit, the left arm, the armpit. The sternum, 
And then we'll take that tapping up to the mohawk line. Slip your fingers so they come to the tops of your ears. Do that a few times. And the thumbs find the base of the skull. There's that notch. Peace fingers sandwich the earlobes. Nice firm circles there. Then we'll find uh, lightning pressure, light, lights in the pressure on your fingers and tap gently to your chin from the bottom of your jawline to the front of your throat down to your heart. And then you can relax into your chair, <clears throat> letting the effects of your practice and your intention, your mindfulness work, settling into the cells. Knowing that on a cellular level, we've benefited the body. So mindfully become aware of your breath, breathing in through your nose and out through your nose. Get in touch with the stillness opportunity for your body. If you feel fidgety, get the fidgets out just for another half a second. Mm -hmm. And then relax into your chair. Feel supported by the chair, the floor, the earth. And we'll do a quick body scan. So in body scans, it is totally normal for your mind to wander. Just bring it back. Each time you notice it wandering, bringing it back to the sound of my voice, the sensations of your breath. <clears throat> Starting by just noticing your face. Breathing awareness is in the foreground and in the background is the body scan. So you notice your head, your neck, your shoulders. Notice your arms, your hands and fingers. Become aware of your upper back, your middle back, and your low back. Notice your glutes, your sits bones, Bring your breath and your awareness up to the front of your torso, the top, and your collarbones, the sternum, the ribs, the navel. Bring your awareness into your hips, down the length of the legs, including the knees and the ankles. Notice your feet and all 10 toes. And sit with your whole body awareness, including your breath, just for a few moments. And so you slowly start to increase the inhale and the exhale, increasing in depth. See if you can call to mind at least, we'll do four things today. See if you can think of four things that you are definitely grateful for. Feel the gratitude. We'll start to move the fingers and the toes, circling the wrists and ankles. 
stretch those arms up. And bring the palms together all the way down to heart center. Thank you very much for taking time out of this day to practice your yoga for yourself. Namaste. Enjoy the rest of your